And we'll study today from Colossians chapter 1, verse 21 through 23. Colossians chapter 1, verse 21 through 23. So would you please turn your Bible towards there and make sure you bring your Bible when you come together to the church. And uh, we conveniently do these things on the screen and all, but it is better to have your own Bible. You can write and mark and underline, do all these things. So, you know, you can engage with the scripture as we are studying because we value the scripture. We value God's word. This is one of the most important thing that uh, we value. Our life is based upon our doctrine and practice is based upon God's holy word. So let us read God's word together in Colossians chapter 1 verses, uh, chapter 1 verse 21. Through 23. Colossians chapter 1, verse 21 through 23. If you have Bible, let us turn towards there. I will read from the NIV. Any version you have, you can read, or you can look at the screen and be read out loud, please. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you wholly in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel. This is the gospel that you heard, and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Now there is a, uh, uh, you can put that picture actually. You see there is a family, his name is Ryan Smith, and his wife, Laura, and a four-year-old son, Caleb. Their parents have been missionaries and they are serving the Lord for the last 50 years. I had the privilege of knowing the father. He is a discipleship pastor who lives in Rancho Penisquitos. And uh, you know, he is part of the New Hope Church here in the Carmel Mountain uh, uh, Street. And his son, this is his son, um, uh, Ryan and Laura and Caleb. They have been in the Republic of Georgia for uh, 10 plus years now uh, to minister to them. And it's no direct access they don't have. So they started some kind of a business type thing called, uh, you know, selling the carpets. They call the re-woven. So, you know, bringing the life back to weave it back together in life and connect them to Christ. That was a ministry and mission they, they have been involved. And uh, she, Laura, was a English teacher in the church, in the, in the school, in the local area. They are loved by the community and do all these things. One of the days, four months ago, July 4, 2018, this month, this year, and Laura was uh, attacked or by abused by one of this uh, man, a shepherd boy, 20-year-old uh, Malkas Kawari, and uh, he assaulted her. And uh, she tried to escape and ran away, and he shot and killed Ryan and uh, Caleb. And she, on the way, she was running, and she fell from a cliff and fell down in a water a fall, and she also died. It took two, three days for people to find out their body. And finally, they figure out uh, they were killed and they died and they recovered their body. And you can see the news still. You can Google it actually, Ryan Smith and the American family, those who are killed in the Republic of Georgia. You can see that. So I had the privilege of uh, having a meeting with, uh, you know, one of, one of the meetings we were attending actually, one of the leadership meeting, training meeting with uh, Byron and Lynn. Byron is, as I said, he's an old man. He's uh, 50 years. He was faithfully serving the Lord. And there is a time that uh, this last four months it was, you can imagine that if the children, you know, his son, their son and uh, daughter-in-law and uh, the grandson were killed. There was one of the meetings two weeks ago, we were meeting that uh, Lynn, you know, wrote a letter, a beautiful letter uh, to Malkas Kabari, the, the, the killer, the suspect who killed uh, their family. He wrote a letter, you know, and uh, offering their forgiveness uh, to him. And they, she asked, her prayer request was this actually in that room, maybe 25, 30 people were sitting there. And this old mother, she asked to pray that the letter will be read because that have to go through all these uh, lot of uh, uh, protocols and procedures to receive uh, the letter to this, uh, this boy's hand in the jail. He is arrested and he is in the jail. It will take some time, but that is in the local media and international media even, all these things are going on. And she had prayer request was this actually and asked to send this forgiveness letter and when this letter will be read to him and he will be able to experience the forgiveness of Christ in his heart. And that was her prayer. And we've been praying and many of us don't have words what to pray for. And this mother started to pray for this person. I would say that I never had experience 
anything like this my entire life actually i saw literally the holy spirit in that room i can touch actually the presence of god in the room actually this is the prayer request of a mother and who was killed her, her, his son her son and daughter in law and four year old grandson was killed all through their life they serve the lord also these kids went from here for the comfort of america to live in the republic of georgia to serve the lord they were killed there also no questions were asked she is simply praying the lord god will open the heart of this boy and he will experience the forgiveness of god and reconciliation with him not only that he will understand that he is not a predator he is not an acu- abuser rather he has created for a greater purpose even though he had to pay the price for his crime what made this mother to pray that prayer what made that prayer i asked actually that that week i didn't have the courage he is going to talk to her actually so i went home you know and that throughout that week i was thinking about this the next week when we meet again for the meeting i went and talked to them actually i know in the heart we can see that what made this old couple without any remorse without any bitterness even when they are grieving it's only 4 months their children were killed actually they are praying how come and how they are able to do it the only reason is that they have experienced the forgiveness of christ they have experienced and understood what the gospel message is this morning as we read here in the scripture you know you see that there is a greater theme in that verses that paul is bringing as we know that last several weeks we are looking in this passage and the first place that we see from 15 onwards and paul is writing that who jesus christ is and he says that god has a greater plan for each of you and god has willing to accept you into that plan and that plan is unrevealed uh, revealed and that is you know opened before their eyes that is what we see in this uh, verses over here in this verses generally that we see our relationship with god through the death of jesus christ that is as simple as it is and that is what we see over here but many time these things we take it as so granted and we see only our own needs and problems all the time as big but many times we forget that we are forgiven people by the grace of god and we see that general statement in verses chapter 1 verse 20 onwards you go back one verse there there we read that paul writes a general statement about uh, reconciliation this is what he says in verse 20 and through him to reconcile to himself all things whether things on earth or things in heaven by making peace through his blood shed on the cross look at this false false teachers in colossi were teaching people that they could not get closer to god and in order in order to get closer to god they should have deeper knowledge and they should be able to do things that uh, you know worship angels and follow regulations and do all these kinds of things then only they can come to god even when they are not they have the assurance that they their sins are forgiven or not by the way by passing let me say this actually no world view in the world no religious system in the world they don't give the assurance of forgiveness of god as christ has offered to us no whereas there is only wishful thinking they do this and good karma or bad things you don't do bad things you do all these things you may there is a wish but the bible tells us and teaches that or the scripture the gospel is this we can have the assurance that my sins are forgiven my sins are forgiven that is what paul says here the first part of it the word reconcile means that a restoration of a, a relationship or a peace that has been disturbed now it is reestablished that is what it means the angers a bible dictionary defines reconciliation as this the restoration of friendship and fellowship after an estrangement it also means to change thoroughly from one position to another position look at that verse carefully verse chapter 1 verse 20 please there are four components or elements of reconciliation of christ that we see in this verse these are the cardinal truth of christian faith also as is there look at slowly there what are the things you see over there chapter 1 verse 20 there are four things that we can see again over there and through him through christ to reconcile himself to all things whether things on earth or things in heaven by making peace through his blood shed on the cross what are the four things you observe there first of all the focus of reconciliation reconciled to himself 
we are reconciling ourselves to god himself the initiative and the action is coming from god himself so god took the initiative to restore us back to himself that is what we see first of all the second thing the scope of reconciliation all things as we have learned yesterday you know this is not only that we die and go to heaven god is going to offer us a new earth here so all these things are going to be renewed and re- reconciled to god himself the third thing that we see the result of reconciliation what is the result of reconciliation we are going to have peace with the god we are going to have peace with the god through jesus christ and the means of that reconciliation how do we got this reconciliation how we are able to experience forgiveness and also to offer forgiveness how did that happen through his blood shed on the cross through his blood shed on the cross look at this actually salvation is only through the sacrificial death of jesus christ that was offered by god himself so that is the crust of everything that we are going to see in verse 21 and 22 so the reconciliation that happened to us it is through the blood of jesus christ there are three simple and basic things that we are going to see in this portion in next 10 15 minutes three things first of all we see our past and then we see our present who we are right now and we'll see our future what is going to happen to us in the future our past we were alienated from god our present we are reconciled with him in future we are going to be glorified with him so this is this is what the christian life is all about let us look at that one by one look at the paul says here we are alienated from god we are once you were alienated from god and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior remember that we are not glory in our past to sins that's what we are talking about sometimes people try to share their story they just goes with all kinds of you know details and grow some things actually we are not glory in the past things and we are ashamed to admit that these things we have done that is a reality but we remember one more thing but actually we are forgiven sinners that we will never forget we looking back at who we are that paul says here who we are paul reminds us that we are once we were alienated from god and we are enemies in our mind because of your evil behavior now paul highlights in verse 21 he tells us that one time we are alienated from god you know this is nothing new to any of us here i know but let us look back there when we read in the genesis the bible starts like this in the beginning god created heaven and the earth and every day god said it is good it is good it is good in the sixth day god created man in his image and after his likeness right we learned last week actually we talked about christ christ is the image of the invisible god and the bible says that we are created in his image but it doesn't mean that both are the same by the way we are rational being you know we are we are rational being we are spiritual being but we are not moral being because the bible says all have seen and fall short of the glory of god there's two different ways we understand that you know we are created in our image in god's image and christ is the image of god you know sanju ramesh and jagi's uh, son his birthday and my birthday is the same way sanju used to tell me uncle pastor uncle you are my twin you know <laughs> so that's what he said he's my twin brother so that is a reference actually we are born in the same day doesn't mean that he is my twin so when you talk about that christ is the image of god and when you talk about we are created in god's image that is two different things but there is essence of god is in us that is what necessarily it means but when god created us for what the bible says that they have a beautiful communion with the god they have fellowship and relationship with the god they were fulfilled there was nothing beyond and above they have don't have to look for anything at all they were able to enjoy god's presence every day of their life but what happened in chapter 1 and 2 that is what we see god has a communion relationship with the god, with the man and man was created to have dominion and take care of everything god has created the work is part of it work is not a result of the curse but work was the mandate that god has given to man so that was a responsibility so they're enjoying it what happened in chapter 3 we know we call the great fall man rebelled against god and the sin came to this world and because of that what happened we all born are sinners now now some there are some of the ideologies try to say that we are all clean spoons the clean slate as we born we make decisions that is what make us good or bad that's what the bible says bible says all have sin and fall short of the 
glory of God. Romans 3.23. David says in Psalms 51 verse 5, Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. So sin is an alienation from God. And we born as lawbreakers. We born as rebellious people. And that is what we sin. It is not the sin that we do makes us sinners. We are sinners. That is why we sin. That is what we see. The, the barking will not make a dog dog. The dog is barking simply because of what? It is a dog. That is the reason. We sin because we are sinners. We are alienated from God. Sin is alienation from God. What is sin? At the core of sin that we see, it is selfishness. That is the I that stand above all the time. It is I that stand because it is the, the I, me. That comes always. That is what sin is. It is selfishness in all core. So we are alienated from God. Paul here says that we are alienated from God. We are enemies or we are hostile towards God. And our, our minds were war with God. We are able to comprehend the things of God at all. This is even today. The people, those who are outside of Christ, this is that their condition is. The Bible says this in Romans chapter 8 verse 7. The mind of sinful man is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. You know, because it, it is hostile. The mind is, is, the thought become evil. What is the result of it? The behavior also become evil. So thought is the one that result in our actions. What we go through. When we come to chapter 3 of Colossians, we'll talk, look about that. Paul says, think about things above. So saturate your mind with the truth of God in order to correct your behavior. So feel, feed our mind with the truth of God. So they are alien, we are alienated from God. We are enemies of God. Our, our uh, minds were war with God and our behavior was evil. This is our condition. And there was no hope for any of us at all. So we, we came into this world as this condition that was at birth, it was there. There is no innocent children. How many parents are here? How many of you have innocent children actually? No, there is no innocent. If you think that, where do they learn these sort things? It is already wired in such a way. You don't have to teach them how to lie. You don't have to teach them any of this bad stuff at all. It is already default built in there. So that's why we all were born. That is, we were sinners. That is our past. But look, at let's go further. We, we don't have to stay there actually because we all are, something happened to us. Verse 22. Verse 21 again we read, once you were alienated from God, and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. Verse 22. But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death. But now. Look at that again. That This is simple but it is profound. God is a subject of restoration. This is the beauty of the gospel. But now something is changing. Whatever we have said so far. Negate when we say but or however. Right? Because all these things, something is going to change over here. We must understand that there is nothing we can do to restore ourselves back to God. None of our efforts will never be able to make us back right with God at all. Because every sin is an offense against God, the holy God. So because of that, we will never be able to restore that relationship with our own efforts at all. He is the only thing that we can accept, do is to accept the offer God has given to us. That is what Paul says over here to Colossians that he says, he, God took the initiative and he extended his grace to us. But now he has reconciled you by, by Christ's death on the cross. This is the good news of the gospel. You don't have to do anything in order to be restored back this relationship. Rather, God has done everything in his capacity to restore you back to that communion it was originally intent in the Garden of Eden. Christ has done for that. Look at that verses again what it says. God is the agent or subject of restoration. Christ is the agent of reconciliation. And what is the means of reconciliation there? The instrument of reconciliation is what? The instrument of reconciliation is, is the cross. The instrument of reconciliation is the cross. Again, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. All have sinned. We are alienated from God. We are enemies of God and we are hostile towards, towards God. And our evil behavior was against him. 
what god did that at that time god sent his own son to die for us on the cross paul says that again this beautiful scripture in second corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 the paul says that what happened then god made him who did not sin for us he, he god made him he who no sin to become sin for us so that we may become the righteousness of god god made him who do not sin so that we may become righteousness god made him sin for us that is what christ has done so what is the means of of salvation is a cry on the cross on the on the calvary that is what christ has done so look at that again this beautiful that paul is refuting here the teaching that the false teachers are offering to the colossian people the colossian heresy it was this christ don't have a body because he has an emanation of an angel so he came down 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 that is what it is but paul here clearly says that how we were saved it is by the death of the physical body of christ the new testament has abundantly clear that jesus was both of god and man he is 100% god and 100% man a one person who spent three and a half years with the christ he write this in first peter chapter 2 verse 24 this is again he explained that what happened it was through the through the cross of christ first peter chapter 2 verse 24 he says like he himself bore our sins who he he christ himself bore our sin where in his body on the tree on the cross that so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness by his wounds you are healed can you read that together let's read that together one more time he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might that is that is there is another sermon we can go you see that what happened christ died for our sins for what so we may die to sin and we will live for righteousness through his stripes we are healed that is a promise that we claim all the time so we see here what we see christ was on the cross and when we go to the feet of the cross what do we see over here his head was crowned with the thorns we see that his uh, dignity his majesty was assaulted he was naked on the cro- on the cross his humanity was assaulted and he was in every way possible way you know he went through this trial after trial and his body was you know beaten up and he was shedding all this blood when we stand at the cross of feet of the cross what do you see what do you see there it is ugly place you see the ugliness of sin the majesty of god's grace you know we see the fury of god's wrath all these things you see over there for what to make that statement but now he reconciled you that is what happened to us now so we are alienated from we are alien from god and we are enemies to god we are hostile to god that hostile is one word you can think but what what happened now god made us holy into his presence so this is a reality that we were trying to learn us today actually i hope that you got what jeff was trying to teach you know what it is then what it means then who we are today our identity is an important thing i know who i was nobody have to remind me that i know that very well but don't forget who you are today i am who we are today the bible says here we are we are alienated once but now we are holy we are set apart we are washed we are god's children and there is god is using us his vessel for his purpose and for his uh, glory so this is an issue i think that you and i have to realize in our lives also and it is very important you know why it is because how we validate our identity has a huge impact upon how we live how we validate our identity has a huge impact of how you live that is what i think that we try to understand yesterday so our identity is not coming from our our self worth or our significance our value none of those things are not coming from anything that we have that is what we understood yesterday do you understand that that is what it is what happened if you have money you will see somebody richer than you and your money has not much value it is only for money for two injections actually by the way at the end of the day your health what happen it can deteriorate you know your your children or your positions everything that we try to find value and worth and significance and identity all things will pass away that is what happened 
Jim Keller, you know, one of my best uh, authors, one of my favorite authors and preacher. You can, you can Google it actually. Just go to YouTube and try to listen. Jim Keller, he has a speech about uh, gospel identity. In that, he makes this case very well. How we find our identity, significance and worth into our life. Who you are today. How do you know that if you all these things are ripped off who you are in your life at the end of the day. So this is what he trying to explain actually. He called there are three ways we understand. There is a traditional identity. There is modern identity. And there is gospel identity. The traditional identity goes like this. What happens is there is, you know, there is a standard. There is an external standard. Beyond or above from us. And we are trying to live up to that standard. Whether you are able to live up or not, that determines our self-worth. That is what happens. That is a traditional way people try to see identity. Especially from a collective culture and society. People like us come. And many hierarchical things that comes. If these things will happen, then our identity, that is what projecting in our life. Something externally that we are trying to live up to. But the modern identity, what uh, Timothy Keller says is this, derived from a subjective, subjective standards set by each individual. So whatever how I feel, what is inside of me, I define and I derive my self-worth based upon what is happening inside of me. That is what we do. This is a lot of moral, you know, moral relativism and all these things comes along with that. My actions, my, uh, you know, my identity, all those things are interwoven by that. I define this identity for myself. So the problem there is with both traditional and modern identity is this. You know, in the traditional view, we never can fully live up to any external standard at all. We'll never able to live up to that standard, no matter what it is. So our value is always depend upon the approval of other people. I think that 95% of many things that you and I are doing is not for you. It is always you think what other people think. You know, the morning you put the sari actually. What was the thing that was going in your mind actually? How many times you change that? Why? Because what other people think. That is what it is actually. It is everything. Sometimes we try to do what other people think about it. So we, this is the external standard and we try to leave for the approval of other people. That is what many times that uh, happened. That is one problem with that. Our value always depend upon the approval of other people. We are also conflicting external values also. So how do we able to live up to that? And the other side with the modern identity ends up in the crushing the people because we cannot find out the purpose and things our own at all. And that is not our job. We are full of conflicting and uh, changeable feelings and beliefs every day. Today that is what we are and tomorrow that can be changed. So never able to come to a conclusion whatsoever at all. But what the gospel identity that we see, in the contrast to both traditional and modern identity, this is Tim, Tim Keller, and he presents in such a way, he says that, we have an external standard of validation. Where the, who that validation is? God. And we have to live up to the standard of God, that is what God demands. But what is the beauty of it? But the means of living up to the standard has already been achieved in Jesus Christ. Did you get that? That is what happened now. So as gospel oriented people, we are not looking for an external thing. We will never able to live up to the standard of God at all. If you have doubt, simply go back and read Matthew chapter 5 through 7 actually. And come back and next week and, next week and tell me why I are able to do all these things. You will never able. Some people think that the Old Testament is so hard. No. Old Testament is sin was in action. The New Testament sin is in, in the thought itself. You will never able to live up to those standards. But you are not trying to live up to that standard. Rather, Christ has already fulfilled that. So my value, my significance, my worth is not coming by anything that I do. Tomorrow I cannot preach at all. I will not be able to do any more Bible study. I don't do any of these things anymore at all. Still I am valuable. Because God sent his son to die for me on the cross. That gives me value. Then Paul asked this question. If he did not spare his own son. Gave him a purpose for all. Along with that. He will not give you all other things. Church we have to come to that understanding. It is not your salary you draw. It is a title you carry. It is your suffix or prefix. None of those things are not the one that gives us an identity. My identity is come with my association with Jesus Christ. I am purchased by the blood of God. That is what gospel is all about. 
that is what christian life is all about that is what we find fulfillment in our calling that is what god has called us to do paul says i look at here again paul says this and nothing more for us to do other than receive the righteousness of god as a gift in our life that is what the other day when we talk about gospel we said cross is not only an expression of the righteousness of god rather it is an exchange of it you know i say this throughout the week actually i keep on saying last one month actually because i when i say this many of you are not getting it so i get excited each time i say that cross is not only an expression of god's righteousness rather it is an exchange of it i will say it little more simply actually that means you are as righteous as jesus christ today still you are not believing <laughs> that is what it is you are as righteous as christ god's son how it is by his death now when the father look at you you don't see as an alienated one not an enemy of god not a hostile person rather this is the way the father sees you now you know this is you but this is the blood of jesus so when the father sees you what do you see you are complete you are perfect you are fulfilled where in christ in christ that is the way god sees father sees us so who you are today our identity is not based upon anything else yes i need to remind myself all the time i am a forgiven sinner i am a rotten wicked person i have nothing good in me at all but i couldn't do anything about that either but when i receive that the grace by faith god made me his son that is the gospel that we see over here that is what paul says paul says that you now you know what you were well, let me tell you who you are today when the foot of the cross this is what we say you are holy you are set apart you are special you are sanctified you are usable for god's purpose now that is your identity today then paul says something more than that so some place you stop there what happened here so paul we look at that stop the stop that portion of that words actually so you are you are our past was that our present but there is paul bring a condition over there in chapter 1 verse 22 but now he has reconciled you by christ physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation verse 23 if you continue in your faith established and firm do not move from the hope held out in the gospel so what happened what is the evidence of this new life that jesus afforded so there is a mistake sometimes people do we call it as legalism and licentiousness what is legalism is legalism says that you do you do you do you do try to do all those things he totally ignore the relationship the relationship aspect of christian life they totally forget that you know they don't understand that there is grace my connection with him is what makes these things and it is the holy spirit lives in me he is the one who gave me the ability they that, that intimacy that communion with him that is what they forget the licentious people whatever when we say these things emphasize on grace we say that we cannot do anything we haven't done anything to be accepted by god what is the result of it so i can do anything i want to <laughs> so that's what i live why god is gracious what do they forget there they forget the righteousness aspect of it the legalists forget the relationship aspect of the gospel the licentious people forget the righteousness aspect of it so paul here says that christ has done everything in order to save you and make you his son and to be set apart and holy and live for his purpose but what is your responsibility you appropriate that in your life that is what paul says in philippians also you know work out your salvation with the fear and trembling church this is what you know grace is not a license the way any way you want to live that is not what it is the bible since you are forgiven since you are purchased by the blood you are able to offer that forgiveness to other people you can live as a free person because of that that is what who we are now so a changed life a transformed life that is what god is looking into us because he has done everything for that you understand that that is what the bible teaches so it is not any way you want to live no you have a responsibility it is not you are living up to the expectation of other people rather you are living as we learn yesterday everything totally because the creator of the universe has done everything for me and he has called me to do that that is a reason that we live for that so let me go further here what happened what is our future then what is our future 
So here Paul says that in, again, what, what God is going to do for us. He is not only that we are, we are purchased by his, his blood and we are living for his glory. And finally, here we see Paul says in verse 22 over there and 23, uh, over 22 itself. And this is what some of you were. But now you are washed. You are sanctified. You are justified in the name of the Lord. And what is going to happen because of that? To present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from any accusation. So there is a responsibility that our part to leave out as reconciled people. Then what is going to happen? Paul says that we are going to be present. We are going to be present. The same word that is used in the Old Testament actually when a person who bring an animal as an offering. It is a job of the priest to, to examine it and presenting it to the Lord. And the same word as without any blemish, without any, 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 any corruption in that at all. That is going to be our future. The world was so used in many places. Look at three things. The result of reconciliation. What is going to happen to us in future? None of you may agree that I am a perfect person. You are a perfect person. But this is what God says. Holy to present you. Holy in his sight. We set apart as declared holy by God. Without blemish, this word was applied. Again, when God looks at you, he sees without any blemish. He wants to present you in such a way, free from accusation. Free from accusation. Romans chapter 8, verse 33 to 34. Paul says that who is that condemns? Christ Jesus who died more than that, who was raised to life. is at the right hand of God and he is also interceding for us. So God is going to present us our future as God's children. As our past is taken care of. We are living in the reality of us reconciled people. But we have a blessed hope and future. We are going to be like him. If you have the Bible, would you please turn towards there in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. This is one of the beautiful scriptures that we read so many times. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. This is the expression again that we see our past, present and future. See, let us read that together, that verse. See what great love the Father has lavished upon us. So that we should be called. Next verse. That is beautiful. Dear friends. Now we are the children. Who are we now? We are the children of God. And that we will be has not been made known. But we know that when Christ appears. We shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. When Christ appears, that is what is going to happen. We are going to be, you know, the, the body that we have with the sickness here, you know, the difficulties and challenges and limitations here, all those things are going to change. We are going to be like him. That is the future. That is what God has called us. Remember that. Our past, our present, our future is taken care of. By, by whom? By Christ himself. You know, uh, Jude writes, in Jude chapter 1 verse 24 and 25, there is one chapter only. That verse it says this, To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God our Savior be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Oh, I believe that all of you are here this morning. You all received this gospel. That is why you are here. If it is not, you know, it is our prayer. It is our, our, our joy to share with you. This is a free gift. <laughs> you don't have to do anything about it. It is already paid for. Your everything is taken care of. Your seat is already reserved. The only thing that you see actually, the grace is offered to you. Receive it by faith. Those who receive that grace, remember that we have a responsibility to live up to and according like that. We cannot do that our own strength. That is where... Paul says the next portion of it, Christ, the hope of glory, is living in us. Christ, the hope of glory, is living in us. It is not in us, it is his power. That we'll look into next week. Would you please pray this morning? And if you come with a guilt in your heart, you don't have to go as it is. Because the grace is available. The hostility was taken care of. And we are holy because of the hope of the gospel. We are alienated, but we are reconciled. We, we are going to be glorified soon. So would you please thank the Lord for this gospel message? Would you please praise the Lord? Our identity, we thank the Lord, our identity is not coming from anything else that we have. Our identity is our relationship with the Christ himself. 
So if you think that, oh, I, I cannot put up, I, I am not connected with that club or group, things or things like that, I don't fit there. No, you don't have to fit anywhere else. He died for you. You are precious to him. You are washed. You are purchased. You are set apart. You are holy. You are beloved to him. That's what we sung earlier this morning. Lord, our love is only towards you. When we realize that what has happened on the cross, what else you can do other than falling down before him, laying our crowns before him and say, Lord, here it is. Would you please pray? As we sing this last song and worship the Lord together, and after that we'll stand on our feet and we pray. We pray for our requests and needs also. After that, we'll go back to the fellowship hall and we'll celebrate together. So let us sing the song together. Let us sing this song together and worship the Lord, please. I hear the Savior say Thy strength indeed is small Child of weakness, watch and pray Find in me thine all in Jesus prayed it As you sing, sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Let us sing again, let us praise the Lord together. Jesus, it all. oh, it is finished on the cross. To him so let us leave for him as we leave this place. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. We, we thank you, Lord, for the blessing that we enjoy because of him. Lord, we thank you that you have brought us together. We are gone astray in our own ways. We are alienated from you. We were hostile towards you. Lord, even when we were enemies to you, you sent your son to die for us on the cross and you paid the price. You gave us the assurance of salvation and forgiveness. Lord, you reconciled us to you and we are so grateful. Lord, our words are only enough to express how grateful we are. Lord, this morning we pray again. Every day, enable us to live in the reality of that gospel, oh God. We will preach that gospel to ourselves. Lord, we will embody that gospel to others in our families, among our, our husband and wife, our children and parents. Lord, among our co-workers, among our friends, in our school, in our dorms. Lord, wherever we are, help us, Lord, to embody the gospel. Lord, to leave us the representatives and ambassadors of your kingdom. Not only mere consumer Christians, rather, Lord, we will be kingdom citizens. Lord, advance the agenda of the kingdom of God in this earth, O Lord, for your glory. Lord, we thank you for the blessed hope that we have one day. We are going to be like you. Lord, what a joy, what a, what a hope that it is. We can be like you. Today we are righteous as you are. Enable us to live out that righteousness through our life of Father. We pray for everyone those who are here. Especially Lord, we thank you for dear friends. Lord, they took the time and to be with us this morning. To worship you. We truly pray Lord this morning. Sincerely we pray Father. You bless them O oh God. Lord, bless their endeavors O oh Lord. In the journeys O oh Lord. In their relationships O oh Lord. In the job places Lord. They will bless by you and they will become a blessing, O Lord. They will know you and they will walk with you closely, O God. We thank you, Father. We commit us in your hands. As we leave this place, we leave this sanctuary, God. Go into the mission fields, O Lord. Help us, O Lord, this week. Be intentional in sharing this message of gospel. Lord, to pray for one another. Stand boldly, Lord. Lord, we will not just separate our, our secular life and sacred life. 
Lord, we are integrated totally and we are together wherever we are. Enable us to live as your representatives of Father. Fulfill that call you have given to us in our lives for your glory and you find that identity in you and you alone, O oh God. We thank you, Father, for everything you have done. Bless us together. We pray for the rest of the week and the, all the upcoming events and all these plannings that we are doing and praying for that, Father. We pray that you direct our steps. We don't want to do the things for the sake of doing it. Lord, we don't want to have some activities for the sake of it. Rather, every activity, everything that we do, Lord, will expand your kingdom, fulfill the kingdom agenda into our life, O oh Lord. We will respect one another, love each other, care for each other, pray for each other. Lord, we will give us the colony of the kingdom in this place, in the city of San Diego, oh God. Bless us together, we pray. We love you, we praise you, we thank you. Lord, we pray for the church, we thank you for their love and concern and care for us as a family. Lord, we speak your blessings upon each of them, O oh Lord. Bless, we pray, Lord. We love you, we thank you, Lord, for everything. We bless you, Jesus. In your precious name, we pray. May the never-failing, everlasting, unconditional, eternal love of our Father, the sustaining, strengthening grace of our Lord Jesus, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit that guides us all the truth, with all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great week ahead. And come for the Bible studies and small groups and all. We'll send you the details also.